Wow! What are these? These are utterly bizarre caterpillars. Meet the caterpillars of the lobster moth, Stauropus fagi. And I breed this species in captivity. It's easy to do and it's fun. That's right. Moths can be pet insects if you take care of them well. They have crazy looking elongated legs that look different from any other caterpillar. But how do we breed them? I'll show you in five steps how to breed this species. I have no clue why they are called lobster moths though. I could probably do a better job of looking like a lobster myself. Splendid. I still don't see why it's called the lobster moth. It's not really doing a good job at looking like a lobster. Unlike me. Me, that's what the attention should be about, not the stupid moths. Me, ha, I'm the creator god. And you are the subscriber kettle. Me. It's getting lobstery in here today. Snippety snap. I turned myself into a lobster. This is the peak of Western comedy, turning yourself into something else. Very cool, very original. <laughs> and today, my lobstery friends, I'm going to explain to you how to breed the lobster moth in five steps. Let's start the first step. Wow! First step, the eggs of the lobster moth. The life cycle of any butterfly or moth starts with eggs. The eggs of this species are easily incubated in a petri dish. On room temperature, it takes about two weeks. You can use plastic or glass petri dishes or even small airtight containers. After about two weeks, tiny alien looking caterpillars will come out. Next, use a paintbrush to scoop them up. Don't use your fingers, as you may end up accidentally crushing them. The babies are fragile. Next, put some oak tree or another host plant in a bottle or a can to keep it fresh. Fill it with water. The larvae like fresh leaves. Make sure to fill it with water. You can also use a small glass bottle. Then place the bottle in a bigger container with paper towels. Scoop the babies up using a paintbrush and place them in their brand new home. This brings us to the next step. Guys, this outfit really shows off my curves. This is why I became a YouTuber, so I can afford to buy Ozempic. Let's start the next step. Step number two. Step two. The babies. The babies love high humidity. At least only for the first few life stages. I noticed that placing the food plant in water really helps them. They like their leaves hydrated and fresh. Their extended legs are very unusual. Scientists aren't sure yet why this species evolved caterpillars with such long legs. They kind of resemble tiny ants. Interestingly, their frontal pair of legs has evolved into what seems like a pair of claspers that they use to grasp the leaf. Eventually, the larvae grow noticeably larger, and this species does grow fast. You can see them double in size or more every week. At this stage, it is very important to upgrade them to a bigger box, because you have to make sure the size of the container is proportionate to the size of your caterpillars. I found a bigger caterpillar plastic box to place them in. This is useful. Here I am placing them in a new box. And over time, yes, they grew even bigger. Fascinating. 
small caterpillars and fully grown caterpillars have different requirements. Now when they get to this size, it's important to change their setup again. That brings us to the next step. Just so you guys know, I didn't know it was going to be a girl's costume when I ordered it. It's not a kink, I swear. It's content, okay? The quality of information presented in this video wouldn't be the same if I wasn't wearing this outfit. How you ask? Oh, you plebeian, you wouldn't get it. Next step. Step three. Mature, big caterpillars. This right here is a pop-up cage. And this is what you need for the final life stage. The young caterpillars like humidity, but once they become this big, they need ventilation and a more dry environment instead. I placed a branch of food plant in a water bottle or a can, and this keeps it fresh, like flowers in a vase. Same concept. The larvae can free roam on this. Place it inside the new enclosure, and you got a great place to raise your babies. I will release them in their new enclosure right now. The babies of Staropus fagi, in my opinion, like to be a little bit on the humid side. But when they grow bigger, they develop a desire for slightly more airy setup, in my opinion. I think they are getting there. So this is a lot of oak tree, of course, in a water bottle while it's a kind of energy drink. I fill it with water, so... Ah. Yes just like that well this is gonna be a lot of food for them but that's okay this species can gain a lot of size in a short time it's only been several days since i last seen them but they have grown so significantly i really think they need an upgrade so let me show you the status right now This is our caterpillars right now. And I want you all to marvel at them. Oh yes, very cool. There's, uh, I think we have a good amount of them, if I'm being honest. I think I like to annoy them sometimes. I think we must have like 20 of them or something. All right, folks, it's time for me to take this branch with crazy caterpillars and place it in their new home, their new enclosure. I just hope they'll like it. From what I understand, they like to be open and airy like this once they hit the third or fourth life stage, which is just about now. Let's make sure they can find the fresh leaves and start feeding. And then we should be golden. Being successful with this species often hinges on three things. Fresh food, strict hygiene, and the right humidity. When it comes to temperature, they are not so picky, actually. You can rear them warm, you can rear them cold. They are pretty strong. Um, but yeah, they do want to be humid as babies and then a little more, bit more airy and ventilated when they are just about this size. Uh, Here they are, free roaming and feeding. The larvae are grown in about one and a half to two months time and they look utterly bizarre. This species is very enjoyable to breed in captivity and it's not super hard to do so. They can eat many plants such as willow, cherries, oak tree, hazel, chestnut, linden aka lime tree, and many more. In the wild, this species is found in dark, shady, and humid places in mature forests. It is a true forest species associated with woodlands, 
and they do need decent stocks of trees and woody vegetation. Let me show you how many of them I raised. Uh, folks, here we go. A handful of lobster moths. Have you ever seen this insanity? Oh, I know some of my viewers are just gonna freak out when they see this. And let's be real, it is freaky. They are freaky. They are the most alien aliens that I've reared. Yo. So cool. So yeah, this is what it looks like and this is how you can breed the lobster moth if you are interested. Whoa. Isn't that wonderful? After a while they do spin cocoons. The cocoons are made deep in leaf litter. And are kind of lazy and minimalistic in nature. They use a thin layer of silk to weave leaves together. And in this, they pupate. Which, by the way, brings us to the next step. It's kind of funny how we depict lobsters to be red in cultural references. Because in the wild, lobsters are many colors, but they are rarely red. You know when they're red? After they've been boiled. Usually alive. That's kind of aft up if you think about it. We humans are cruel creatures. Oh well, what can I say? In human society, a little bit of suffering is acceptable. If the rest can benefit from it. Just ask any Amazon warehouse worker, for example, they will know. Next step! Step four. The cocoons. Well, this is gonna be a short step, to be honest. All you have to do is wait. The pupa of this species actually do have to hibernate sometimes. But mine did not hibernate when I was making this video. So I guess we can skip this step this time. I honestly placed them in a plastic box lined with paper towels. This is an easy makeshift container for pupa of small species of moths. And it works fine in all honesty. If they hibernate it gets more complicated. Then you just have to store them cold through winter in low temperatures. But mine were not interested in hibernating it seems. So a few weeks later I heard something move. And yeah, a new moth was hatching. Finally, the first specimen of the lobster moth was coming out. Just look at it. It's ready to inflate its wings. Wow, beautiful. Here it is, the lobster moth. This brings us to the last and final step. If the neighbors ever ask me what I'm doing in my own garden in this outfit, I tell them it's work related, okay, it's business. Being a YouTuber is a serious job that deserves more respect from society. We YouTubers work hard to give you beautiful and meaningful content. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's what justifies all of this. Let's go to the next step. Whoa, there it is, finally. Have you ever wondered what the crazy caterpillar of the lobster moth transforms into? By some metrics, the moths themselves are somewhat unremarkable, but I do think personally that they are cute. The moths cannot feed themselves, they have no functional mouth. Like many other moth species, honestly, they essentially just starve in a week or so. The species is found in old woodlands, especially if there is plenty of beech tree, oak, hazel, chestnut or relatives of the oak family that the larvae prefer to feed on. But how do you keep these moths in captivity? Well, this is a pop-up cage, a small enclosure especially made for insects. You can use it to contain the lobster moths. In this cage they will freely mate and lay eggs. The females can lay a lot of eggs. They will eventually hook up with the males and produce fertile egg batches. These you can collect eventually and incubate in petri dishes. It takes about two weeks for the babies to come out, but here we are. The life cycle is completed. And here is me taking care of the next generation of babies once again. Thank you guys for watching. 
you follow my instructions well, then you can breed these unusual animals as well. If you are an aspiring moth breeder, this is a must-have species. In any life stage, they are fascinating to observe. The main issue with this species is that it may be hard to obtain. Which is interesting because they are not considered to be a rare species in the wild. However, the females of this moth have a hidden lifestyle and rarely come to light. The larvae are well hidden in the trees and camouflaged too. So breeding material rarely comes available. If you see eggs or cocoons of this species for sale, consider yourself to be lucky to have an opportunity to study and breed them. Subscribe to my channel to see more moth species. I'm currently breeding some super rare species behind the scenes. I'm sure you want to be a part of it. I filmed over a thousand moth species. If you're a real and true bug nerd, you can't avoid watching my channel. See you next time.